Hi, Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today we're going to do Tisket a Tasket using two fat quarter blocks. Hopefully you've got your pattern. If not, you can follow along. And here's the one I've made already in the patriotic colors. There it is. There's the side of it. There's the top. First, we're going to light that candle. Let me see if I'm going to bring this camera down here. All right, I have my volume turned totally up. And let's see if we can hear it. Let's see if we can light it first. Do you hear it crackling? I can hear it. Okay, here are the two fabrics that I'm going to use for this back quarter. And by the way, I want to let you know that that candle, oh my gosh, it smells wonderful. It's that lavender scent. Ooh, I just had to tell you that. Now, both these back quarters should measure 18 by 21. That's what I was saying in my last video about a full size back quarter. Because I have known them to be less than that. And the reason that you want it that size is that you're going to need to cut this selvage off on both of them. As a matter of fact, this one has little holes. See the little holes? So that's gotta come off. So I go right up to the second, uh, well actually this has got one, two, three, four sets of holes. Let's make sure it has four, not five. Okay. And since I know that my side here is not straight because it hasn't been cut. I'm going to be real careful with it, but I'm going to try to line it up anyway. Put my weight on here. Because I'm going to go ahead and cut this side because I know that the side that I just cut is straight at the bottom. So I'm trying to get my straight of grain and I'm trying to think, should I be making this the outside or the inside? I think I want to make this the outside of the basket. Let me put my weight on there. And cut that off right there. There's that. Actually, this looks like more of a straight on the bottom here. So let's just take that a little bit off the edge there. And we'll square this up. Okay. I'm gonna, not going to worry about the length of that yet. Now I'm slipping this in because I did not show it in the video that I was recording. When I just got done editing all of it, I realized I didn't show you that you would have two pieces. Now keep in mind that my fabric, these fabric choices are not two fat quarters because this is what happens when you use a fat quarter that's too small. And I actually had them that were too small. So I went ahead and I used them anyway. So they're just off a little bit of color. This is what the inside lining and the outside of the bag is gonna look like. And then same thing here, I did not have enough fabric, but you'll have four of them and these are what they look like when they're cut. So I'm doing them two and two, okay? And then I'm gonna also, this is what I wanna show you that at the tail end of the video, I'm gonna explain what I'm doing here, okay? Because I've marked these. Now this is not the real pattern. You don't mark it up here, but I did it and it'll be uh, clear at the end of the video. I am using blue thread in the top 
and I'm actually using red thread from my last project in the bottom. My bobbin will probably run out on me. If it does, it will tell me. Then I will just turn around and change it. Now, you're supposed to do this a quarter of an inch. Of course, I'm going to do a scant quarter of an inch because I want my bag a little bit bigger. And don't worry whether the bottom is even or not because when you're finished, you'll even it before you sew it. This way, you'll know it'll be the same exact size. I pin it in a few places. And hopefully, you can hear me above the air conditioner. I did not lock it into place because the bottom will be taken care of. Let me increase my speed a little bit there. This unit does um, make a little less noise than my last unit did. I tell you, the past few weeks it's been so hot, I have not wanted to be up here in this sewing room. Oh my gosh. I have the um, attic above me. It's um, like a half a attic, I guess you call it. It's the half that I've got above me is a finished attic. It's got carpeting, it's got a bench that goes underneath a little, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, the little window that's in the roof. Oh, the skylight, that's what it is, okay. So there's a skylight up there. I put a um, attic fan in there, but it lasted exactly one summer, and that was like a waste of money as far as I was concerned. I have no clue why it didn't work more than one summer. And it had a regulator so that, let's go around the corner here, so that it wasn't running all the time just when it got to a certain temperature up there. So I don't know what the problem was, but I wasn't putting another one in for that price. That cost too much money. I don't usually open that window up there, only if uh, my neighbor comes over and needs to get on his roof for some reason. Then I have him come up in the attic and he can get over there. He put some um, little covers in his gutter one time. And he doesn't have an attic. He doesn't have anything similar to what I have at his house. It's kind of weird how some of these homes are built, although they're right next to each other. I mean, I have the full attic, but half of it is looks just like an, an attic would look. It's got the boards, it's got the insulation in the floor and all that kind of stuff, and it's not finished, or this half is finished. I think the people before me finished it off. She um, had a little studio up there. and patriotic when it gets finished but you know you can make this in baby colors and make it for a little baby you could put a bib in there a baby bottle pacifier little rattle toy all kinds of things and give it at a shower yeah definitely be one of a kind little gift you can turn around and change the dimensions instead of using fat quarters you could actually um, do measurements and make a bigger bag Could make it smaller too for that matter you can make it half this size <sighs> I should have brought a drink up here I'm getting hot there it's telling me my bobbin's done Let's just uh, let's take a look at it. Uh, let's see if we can go a little bit further here. Uh, okay, all right, already. Let's back it up. I'm going to use another red color. Let's just take this off. Just 
go over the spot we were in. Turning our corners here. Let's take that pin out. I'll tell you, when I did that last one, I was bending pins right and left. I must have had a weak set of pins. Now because these have to be turned inside out and then you're going to it's top stitching. So in order for this not to be bunched up so that when you're top stitching you can't because this is trying to split and it's like a big wad of stuff and then you'll end up breaking your needle or your thread won't go straight. I went ahead and just clipped real close so it's about an eighth of an inch. There's no problem with that if that's what you want to do. Then when you flip it You can feel it in there where it's laid down so it's not all bunched up. And you can do it both ways. Do it first without clipping it and then clip it. I just come down to about right here. And then I just go around that corner. That's all. Okay, that's it. Let me turn them for you and then we'll So iron. when you get both of those done, they're going to look like that. Now, for all those that are new and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't go around the corner. Well, then don't go around the corner. Go straight across. You don't have to go around the corner. You know how to clip the corner so that it'll flip on you. You do whatever you want. These, This pattern just says go around the circle. You don't have to. Heck, if you didn't want to sew the edges of this, you could make your outside a rough, which I don't have one made, but... Nothing says you have to do it. What you could do, and let's say that you don't even want to tackle that, go about right here. Sew it after it's closed like this. From here, what you do is you lock your fabric. In other words, you sew. You come up here with your sewing machine. You'd stop and you lock it in place. Don't sew any of this. Come over here. Start. Now, this is inside out, mind you. Start here, lock it in place, and go down to the end. So now you've sewed both ends, and this is totally open. When you flip it and it's open like that, you can take you a pair of, of pinking shears and cut in a straight line real close and then sew, and I would sew before I did the pinking shears, sew straight across here, do the pinking shears, and then it'll be a little like a, sort of like a confetti type top. Nothing says you can't do that. You can do whatever you want. All right, so for the body, you're gonna take both your pieces, you're gonna put them right sides together, and all you're doing is you're making a seam. One is the lining and one is not. So you're making them identical. I'm gonna put a pin up here at the top. To hold the fabric here at the bottom. You took your two long sides and pulled them together. These aren't the short ones. This isn't narrow. This is a, this is quite round now. I don't know if you've put the wrong sides together because it'll be a, a tall, skinny tube. Let's clip these apart. 
Okay, so we layered the two ties together and we slipped them into one of the tubes. And then we pinned the ends with a little bit of the tie sticking out. And now we're going to sew this. Where I give it more than a quarter inch, I go ahead and go to the edge of my foot when I sew this. And I do lock it in place. Now you should have the tube like this and those two pieces inside. All right. If you're following along, go ahead and flip to page four. And now it wants us to pinch and flatten our corners. We want to make sure that we don't take these and accidentally sew them. So this is what it's saying to do. Let me change positions here so you can see it better. Okay, so this is the corner. They want you to flatten it like this. <clears throat> See, these pieces are still out of the way. And what you're trying to do, and you can feel it. Here is where the part that's sewn in. It's way down here. See, right here? This is the part they want you to sew up here. So you can see, because I'm looking right at this, okay? They want you to sew this. So you can go right right or left, makes no difference. I actually you could even go open if you wanted to. We can always cut that seam at the top or fold it like that. Because we're gonna cut it off anyway. That's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be a lot easier for you to understand. So do it like that. I'm gonna lay it down here on the table. Now all my pieces are over here. Okay, they're not underneath there. There's nothing underneath there but the corner of this. Take your ruler. And if you put the one inch on it, and you come right down the seam, and you stop right here where your fabric is at, which is you can do, you can mark all the way across there. And actually, let's see here. See if I can get it to, yep, it will mark. And that's the part you're going to cut off. Right, excuse me, that's the part you're going to sew where the seam is at. I'm going to flip it and repeat it over here. You make sure there's nothing's in the way. You can maneuver your bag. We're going to act like we're starting from scratch. I'm going to split our seam open. Put this on the seam. And all I did was I went on the seam and then I went from corner to corner. From that corner to that corner. And then what you can do, and I will show you here, to make sure it is the same amount, take your ruler and go from the corner you're going to sew to the corner right there. Bring it down here so that you can read it. And if I sew on there, I am getting three quarters inch. Whoops, excuse me. I'm sorry. I just rolled on my table here. I'm going to figure that my needle is going to come across the line. So if I count these here, it's not three quarters of an inch. This is three quarters of an inch. Right here. I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, eight makes one inch. So seven eighths inch. If I skew a little bit more to make it one complete inch, then I need to go on the other side of my line. Bring this over here. Let's see if we want to do that because we don't want to interfere with that. So yes, I could do it. So let me put it back down here. 
and I will mark an inch. And we'll just do it an inch on each one. There's an inch, and I'm going to go over here to the left so I can mark from the center to the left and the center to the right at the one inch mark. So I'm taking this line right here that I made bold because I'm going to do an inch from the edge instead of the seven eighths inch. We're going to do an inch. Well, I'm going to do an inch because I like the way that inch looks. And if you don't want an inch, you don't have to have an inch. You can have less, you can have more. Just don't go into this fabric right there. I mean, you can see that fabric, so you know you're not going to get into it. And then I'm going to sew. If you feel like you need to pin that, you can pin that. I don't feel like I need to pin it, but... And then you lock your corner here. And we're going to do the other side. You could iron it flat and then you could do it if you wanted to. Now I just take my scissors and cut it off like that. You can take your rotary cutter if you want. Back up the camera here so you can see. See how you got like a little boxed corner there? It sits down. Here's the other part it's sticking out over here. See, there's the corner you made. There's the other corner you made. It's still got scragglies. I don't know where that's coming from. There we go. And here's this other corner. Okay. Okay, so when you look inside, let me give you a, show you what it looks like in there. See? You can see your corner. Seam down the back. Make sure you can see inside there. Okay, here's the back. Just like that and sitting up. Now we're going to work on the line. Now if you were just now confused, then skip that step a minute and let's go to the lining and let's do it. Nothing says you have to do the bag before you do the lining. Okay? So this is done without the ties. So just put it down, put this in the middle here, split it about as even as you can. I'm going to put a pin, one pin in here. Okay? And we're just going to sew it as if it had the other piece attached to it. Lock it into place when you get down here at the bottom, just like you did at the beginning. Okay, and now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make our corner. Take it, and I'm going to split it in the middle just like I did before. This is my one inch from the tip. side same thing and I'm going to sew it I 
used to pin mine all the time when I first started. And then every time you do a bag, you just about do these corners. Everybody makes them so pretty. You kind of want to learn how to do this because you want to put bags. Even when you make the bags for um, going to the store, you still want to do this. There you go. There you're looking in the bag now. Put it inside out. Okay, tuck all these things down in there because otherwise our top wouldn't be correct. So we're tucking in our pieces. Actually, let's see here. Let's do it this way, which would be a lot easier. And I'm going to show it to you on the inside here. Okay. Let me show you. Let's see if I can get it to set up. Here's what it looks like. It's down in the bottom. Okay. Now we're going to take this with the right side together and the seam. Here's the seam. So I'm grabbing my bag and I'm putting it in so that the seam is on the same side. Here's a seam, here's a seam. Okay, right sides together like this. And then you're going to pin it. I'm going to pin it all the way around because we're going to sew it. And that should all fit. It's the same size, remember? And if whenever you make these kind of bags, either this or for anything else, if you want, you can always make the lining a little bit smaller. And when I say a smaller, I mean like an eighth of an inch. Because see how you got a little bit here? That's because they're the exact same size and you're trying to put the same size on top of another one. You can always do it upside down and ease it in. And I'll start on the right hand side and work my way around. Okay. And now I'm going to take the desk off of my machine here, my extension, because it'll be easier to right, sew. So my extension table is off. This makes it a lot easier to sew. Now the handle should still be tucked down inside the bag, so that won't be a problem. And I'm going right here to the edge of my foot, just like I did before. Same thing. Locking it into place. I'm going to lock it into place. I'm going to actually do it right over this seam. And guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to leave a, whoops, I forgot to leave a hole to open it. See, even I can make a mistake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it off to the corner here and I'm going to make it right here. So let me lock it in place a couple of times so it won't be weak. That ought to be big enough to do it. I hope I left that big enough. Sometimes I never know. I'm going to see if I can grab those, those ties. If I can get them out this. This hole here. There we go. There we
You know, sometimes I have the trick on how to get it out, and then there's other times that I don't have the trick. There we go. So now it looks like that. The bottom of the bag is the other side. And now we're going to tuck this in. And you tuck your corners in here that you made because they'll match up. so that it lays down and here's the opening right here and we'll just fold that like that and iron it which will look like it's already got a seam in it let me get that iron it wants us to top stitch around the bag and I want to start where the seam is at and I'm not going to back stitch I will meet it when I come around If your bed doesn't come off or your little attachment here, then just take your time because it can still be done. we're going to roll this over look at those little stars right there they are automatically on my machine let's see what that's going to look like one thing about those whenever you've got a little bit of I want to call it puffiness, but what it is, is the thickness of this fabric. You've got to watch where your foot goes, because see, it's already wanting to go off of the fabric. And I'm not quite sure why it wants to go off the fabric, but it does. Maybe because it's going on an angle. Oh yeah, that's what it is. It's a different kind of star. Okay. I see what it's doing. Alright, that's not quite the one I had before, but that's okay. That'll still work. worked out pretty good and then what I like to do is I like to bring my foot down needle up I like to put it back on the first stitch and then now that it's moved over to the left I need to move it over to the right because I want it to go down in the same exact spot 
and I want to do my own stitch to lock it in. Sometimes I just don't like that straight up and down stitch for locking. Let me show it to you here. And there it is. There it is. Now I think I'm going to do just a straight stitch on this side too, so it's got two stitches on that side. The other strip that I made, this right here. And now the last thing to do, which I'm going to do, and I will tell you, you don't have to do it. Let now, me show this you. This is where I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach these ties to the bag. You do not have to attach the ties to the bag if you don't want to. I want to, however. You can leave them just like they are and stuff them if you want or attach them. I'm going to go ahead and attach them now. And I'm going to use this red thread here. I don't need my pin in there now. And I will lock it into place. And I'm just going to come straight across. Now all I'm doing is come across the words. I'm not worried about the whether it's right or wrong here. And then just stop before I get off the edge. There we go. Over and do the other side, same exact way. in it to give you an idea what it looks like. Okay, there it is, filled up. And it still has room for more. So I added the third one that I told you about, the little, this right here, if you didn't know how to do the top, and it's not attached. See? But I put this little thing right here around it. Now this is what I got in one of those swaps. The little thing right there. So this is the one side, and that's the other. So see, you can do all kinds of different things with these bags. So I just wanted to show you, and I hope everybody enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I will see you all next Thanks time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.